As I mentioned before, edogami is this practice started in the 70s in, J in Japan, and it actually was a sumi artist who wanted to do something with a little less discipline, if that makes sense. And um, it, this is actually, I've seen it before and I thought it was really interesting, but I thought I didn't really want to try it. I just felt intimidated. I don't know what it was, why I didn't want to try it, but I did and I am so in love with it. So what I did is um, I used, this is actually, these little pieces are done on rice paper, but if you don't have rice paper, that's okay. I've got one here I want to show you that I did with watercolor, hot press watercolor paper. Um, it's still, you know, it's a little thicker, but, you know, it's a smooth, any smooth paper, but the best experience, of course, is to do it on rice paper, but if you don't have it today, no worries, just get what you have. I think I mentioned um, in our email yesterday, cut your pieces down. These are five by seven. Um, I like it a little bit bigger than a four by six, which is the traditional Japanese edigami postcards are four by six, and they're made out of a of rice paper, I think, mounted on something. So, if you don't have that, we, I've only seen, uh, I think I found one source for edigami postcards and I really, um, on Amazon, but I, I think that they're limited, you know, there's just not a lot of that. So you can, you can make do with what you have. If you have newsprint and you want to just practice, newsprint is a very absorbent and it's kind of an off white, but it's really, would be really good for doing this fun thing. Um, you want to have, so you the rice paper, so that's, or your paper, whatever you've got, that's important. Then you want, and this is just another paper I tried. Um, I also thought it was interesting too. So really just any plain paper, even if you have your journal or some uh, typing or just paper coming from your printer, you know, whatever you've got. So to just, um, you'll need the paper. You also need some ink. Now um, I use Sumi ink, of course, because I have lots of it. And I think Sumi ink is essential in any art person who's creative and wants to do art. Sumi ink is really important to have. So this is a little tiny bottle I talked to you about, I think earlier in the week, you can get big bottles, little bottles. It's just plain blue, black Sumi ink. You need that. <clears throat> brushes. Now I use Sumi brushes, but if you don't have that, your round watercolor brushes will be fine. The only thing is when you get ink in your watercolor brushes, it's hard to get out. So you need to have one brush that's for your ink and one that's for your color, watercolor. So if you just want to, if you just have two round brushes and that's all. Um, okay, so Beth asked me, does the, does the Sumi ink or does the ink need to be permanent? Sumi ink is permanent. Um, it's not like a, it doesn't have a pigment or with, it's just carbon and water, but it is permanent. So if you get it on your clothes, it's not coming, it's not coming out. I mean, it's not, it's just not. Um, you can also use India ink, um, inks that have binder in it. That's fine too, but I think you're you're going to get your most uh, wonderful experience with just Sumi ink. But if whatever you've got, I mean, it doesn't need to be permanent. I guess that's the because um, in rice paper, it's going to go in and absorb just like it would fabric. It's not moving. <laughs> so, um, and then what I talked about brushes. These are just inexpensive um sumi brush or you know ink brushes or calligraphy brushes these are made in china you can doesn't matter where you get them <clears throat> you can buy them they're fairly reasonably priced um so i just have and you've got one for your color and one for your ink and even if you just use your western brown brushes you can do that as well so no you don't have to buy anything special it's just nice to have these um, on hand the other thing is you need a little dish to put your ink in something whatever whatever you've got and i'm going to use like a different dish for my color of course now watercolors whatever you have so if you have something like this you know just watercolor set like this you can use that or you can use what i love using because i happen to love them it's something we call gonzai watercolors and they're made in japan but this is what's traditionally used but it's not necessarily um, necessary for you to use that today that I just I'm gonna use, I'm doing a demo with these because I have them and <clears throat> and they're just they're just fun. So, but you want a minimal amount of colors. You don't need twelve colors. You need very few. You know, three colors. Maybe even your um, primaries that we worked with last week: the quinacridone, magenta blue, and or the thala blue and the yellow. You can mix different colors. So, yeah, keep your color palette simple. And what else do you need? 
Oh, okay. So another thing that I like to do, but I'm not going to, I'm going to show you, this is something if you wanted to get into this, these little felt pads. Now I'm not going to use this today because it's I'm not going to, it's going to make it really crazy when I'm trying to paint and the camera does not like this pad, but um, it's just a felt pad. Um, I use this to paint any with ink and rice paper because the right, the rice paper is absorbent and sometimes the ink goes through. So I like to have a pad, but if you don't have that, <clears throat> Another thing that works really well is just a sheet of just a piece of um, paper towel. Just put a paper towel down and we want water. And so the other thing we want is some water for our ink and water for our color. Don't mix the two because the semi ink is really, really, really strong. I mean, very, it's pretty amazingly strong. <laughs> and um, we've got our water, we've got our, uh, all of our supplies. Um, another thing that uh, it this thing seems to require well it as you can see when I show you here we go the couple of these here there in this in the itagami there is a chop or a seal that the artist creates um, I made my own and I'm going to show you how I made mine today I'll show you how I did it but if you don't have those right now even just a red marker or a red you know anything you've got if you have just one a little red marker and then just sign your name or make a little you know little seal i'll show you that too but um i also wanted to show you this ink that i found because you can buy the if you have some chinese ink seal ink that's like made it's like this it's uh made it's kind of a toxic material you know it's not it's not the safest stuff and it's kind of oil based it's got a very oil it's oil but i i've got these because i have seals of my own they're carved but um, if you don't want something like that, I love this. This is um, Ranger Archival Ink Carnation Red. That's the color. It's a perfect red for this. You can see it's like almost similar to the seal ink that you would buy. Um, I like the red. So I wanted to share with you that is the I have black ink and this red because I love it because it gives that that sort of that Chinese red color. So we've got our ink, we've got our watercolors, we have our brushes, we have our paper, and now you need a subject. So what I did was I was work, this is my, was my subject yesterday, a plain white cup. That's what this was. Um, today I'm going to do something a little crazy in front of you guys. I haven't, I thought, well, I'm going to try something a little harder, but this is a little um, teapot. It's really, really, a, it's a water dropper, actually. You put water in it and you use it for sumi painting. I thought that would be a fun one to do. Maybe I'll put that in front of me. Um, so I've got my cup and my teapot. Those are in front of me right now as a subject to draw. Very simple. If you have a piece of fruit, you have an apple, you have a lemon, just something in front of you because you want to do, you're going to draw what is in front of you. Not, we're not going to draw anything complicated, you know, or, or, or complex. We want to keep it simple. Um, this one was a, just a flower I did out of my head, so you can even do that too if you want to. You can do something like that, whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm gonna. It's gonna be an uncomfortable experience, and I'll explain why. And I don't mean uncomfortable like comfort level, but just it's a strange, it's a strange experience, and I'll tell you why. And I love it. That's why I love this. So what you have is if you whatever brush you have, if you have a you know regular watercolor brush or you have um, just a one of these brushes. You're going to hold it differently than you would your normal brush. Normally, when we paint, we paint kind of like this, right? Well, when we're drawing these drawings, we're going to be holding our brush up in our hand, and we're going to kind of let it dangle. So, so it kind of moves, and I hope that you can see it. So, basically, you're going to hold your brush up in the air, and we're going to draw, and that's what creates that loose line, that really interesting kind of rough line. Um, is basically as you hold your brush up. You're, when you dip it in ink, we're going to just draw very slowly, and that's what gives you that kind of that look, that rough but beautiful graphic and living lines. I kind of think of them as living and breathing because we kind of work with our breath and we um, have our breath kind of work on the lines. So I've cut some papers down, and these are just beautiful. Actually, the paper, I'll tell you what it is so you'll know. This is called Gassen paper, G-A-S-E-N. It is a pretty absorbent. It's very, it's very absorbent. It's a little thicker. It's a nice rice paper. It's a slightly kind of off white 
it's not really a bright one. That's a pretty good white, but it's a, it's a warm white. It's really beautiful. And I'm going to use that. And I think I'm going to do my drawing horizontally or landscape rather than vertical. But you can decide however you want your, your picture to be. <clears throat> one thing you'll need to do is pour your ink in the little dish. So we're not going to do coloring for a while. So I'm going to put some ink in my dish. And the sumi ink really doesn't need to be shaken, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, I'm going to pour some ink in, and now we don't need a lot of ink unless we're going to do a series. Now, we can do a series of drawings. In fact, it's better to do a series. Just about that is all probably I will need. Maybe a little more. Um, we're going to, if you want to have, if you have several sheets, this is the best way to do it anyway, is to do, have several sheets cut and ready to go because these are spontaneous going to be spontaneous and I've got four sheets right now so I'll do four drawings and then what we have to do is wait for those drawings to dry and we go into the painting part the watercolor part so I've got my ink and I have some water and I'm just going to use a small thing of water and I've got a little paper towel small paper towel that I want to have just to help dry my brush so I've got this little piece here or if you have a rag this is just going to help with the brush shape the brush so I've got some water and I'm going to put some, um, I'm just going to make sure that my, this you can see has held ink because it's got, still has some dark in it. And I've got it dipped in water, but it's not dripping wet. And I'm going to um, take my ink and I'm going to load my brush up with the ink. And I'm going to just wipe it off the sides, just, you know, kind of just wipe it off and make sure your brush still has a nice point. Like if it has a little loose hair or something, remove it now. And then just take your brush and kind of dip, just check it. And so it's not dripping, dripping wet. It's just you've got some color, you know, you've got some color here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this crazy thing. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm saying I'm going to put my little teapot here on something so I can see it, I'm going to elevate it, my little teapot and I'm going to look at it carefully my subject I just want to kind of take a look at it and I'm going to just observe now I want this because you can see this is a little teapot but I'm going to make it larger than life and it's going to probably go off the page so what you can imagine your drawing surface is really out here out on the outside so my teapot is going to be composed somewhere in inside here that means some of it's going to go off the uh off to the side that's why the black <laughs> sometimes the black uh, having the black mat is a good thing because then your drawing disappears but okay so i've got it loaded up and i'm going to hold it at the very top of I'm just holding it at the top kind of loosely between my uh, you know i don't want to tighten it up and i don't want to be tight so i'm not going to hold it like this i'm going to hold it with my thumb and forefinger i'm just going to make sure i've got it tipped and i'm going to start my drawing and I need to do it, I have to just kind of decide, all right, here's the top of it. So if I'm really shaky though, <laughs> then I'm gonna have to tighten it up a little bit, but I'm just gonna start and I, the, I'm not really gonna worry too much. Now this, I need a little control because I am I am shaking right now. I don't know why I think it's because I had some coffee, <laughs> but that's okay, that gives it the life. That's what gives it the life. And now I'm gonna do the little top of the teapot and I'm gonna do the little, whatever that thing is, the, the handle. And now I've got the sides and really do this when you're breathing, um, kind of like a, it's a meditative thing. You know, you just wanna follow the lines and really to make it a perfect teapot, there we go. Um, it's not gonna be perfect because look, I mean, I'm just doing it. And it's not perfect, but it is there. It is. So it's going off the paper a little bit. And there go. I'm going to do some control. You decide if you if it's too wiggly like mine was. There we go. Um, then you can always control a little bit of your your drawing a little bit. There we go, like that. That's how I wanted it. And now I see the place here where it kind of needs a like a little place there, a little line. Now I see it needs to have some kind of ground, like a, I'm thinking I want it to be on um, some kind of surface, or I could make a little fruit here. So I'm just going to make a little kind of a round, maybe these are cookies. Let's just pretend these are cookies. 
<laughs> those are cookies. And then I'm gonna make a horizontal table line. And I'm going slowly. And I'm just there. I'm just obviously not going anywhere else. There. So that's it. That's the drawing. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna do another one. And I'm gonna do the teapot because I think you can do the same thing over and over and just see how it works. Just see what happens. Each one will be different. And and just you get the feel of how you want your uh I see I have a hair that's kind of coming out of that, so I need to fix that. A little hair that just wants to make its yeah, it's not too bad. So now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just loosely and deliberately make that round sort of place. And the wiggliness is actually wanted. And we want that. There's the little top part of that teapot. And now I'm just going to, I'm just observing this teapot and going and just creating that handle shape going off the page and now just following the the line of my just observing and slowly observing and then I get and it's different looking than the other one because I'm just seeing differently now there we go and I could make other lines whatever is on the teapot I'm going to make um maybe on this one Maybe, maybe I could make uh, just the table itself, just across, just some kind of horizontal space here. There we go, like that. And maybe it needs one, and maybe just leave it plain. I'm just gonna leave that one plain. No cookies, tea without cookies. <laughs> maybe I think it also would be nice is to have a little extra line down below. So there's another one, very rough. I'm gonna let that sit aside. And now I'm going to take, I think I'm going to try a third one because this is a way you can really get to know your subject. Just do it again. So I'm going to try it again, but this time I'm going to go even slower than I did the first time. So I'm going to go really slow and see what happens. And I might even blow up the teapot even more. We'll see. Make it larger. So I'm going to do a little circle for the, for the top. And I've got the little top thingy, whatever that thing is. And then I'm not gonna put the handle on this yet. I'm gonna make that the last thing I do and see what happens. So I see the side, the out, the shape of the, the shape of the uh, teapot. And then I've got the little spout. And there's that. So just kind of, wow, it's way different than the one that I did before. So really, it's just funny how I'm seeing it's so differently or i'm it's not that i'm seeing it differently it's just that my hand is doing something different i'm going off the page so that is there we go so there we go i'm going to just do another little line something i didn't do before in the other one and there's actually a bird here like a little um it looks like a some kind of bird so i'm just going to do the bird just for fun so whatever you've got in front of you, just do it. And um, there we go, something different there. Now this one, I'm gonna do one like a uh, piece, just one, maybe another cookie, because I'm thinking of cookies, <laughs> tea and cookies. <laughs> there we go, maybe a third cookie. No, just two, because I think I wanna keep as much white space as I can, because I don't really need to, there we go, making the table, it sits on. And I'm going to leave it. Now I'm done with the drawing. So I'm going to set that aside. And we could put our thoughts or words right now. If we wanted to, to write our, uh, our calligraphy or our words in brush letter, and let's do that now. Think of a quote. Like I, I actually had a couple of quotes that I really liked. Um, I love this. Um, there's, I found some ins inspirational quotes. Um, and so if you find one, here, I'll, I'll, I'll do one out of one that I already did. I'll just do this while the ink's out because you don't really want to mix the ink with the color. So here's one I did. It's a picture of a succulent coming out of a, a ceramic thing. It's just something I had in my kitchen. And I, and I really thought I, I liked this uh, um, quote. It's a, it's a quote by Banksy, actually. 
So then I'm going to just take my same, my same ink. I'm going to wipe off all the excess that I can because I don't want it to have too much. And I'm going to write um, a, a quote. So I'm going to write, here it is. When I'm just going to go ahead and go take a, you know, with the lettering, you can hold, you can hold your, you know, get your hand down closer and just kind of try it so you can get at least so that it's legible, right? <laughs> now I've got another thing I forgot I should have brought out, brought out was a, a little brush pen. I think that would look really cool as well. So here we go. When you get tired, I love this. This is my quote. I might put this in my um, bathroom or someplace in my house, just as a reminder. Um, and I'll show you what I mean when I, when I uh, finish it. So here we go. When you get tired, and I don't want to overthink the the writing, you know, just use it in your own handwriting, your own style of writing. You can go small letters or big letters, whatever you want. So this one's learn. This one is a great one. Learn to rest. Learn to rest. Here we go. One more thing. And I love this. Because if you've ever felt that, well, that uh, feeling of like, oh, I just don't want to do this anymore, whatever it is that you're doing, there it is. I love it. When you get tired, learn to rest, not quit. I love that quote, and that's by Banksy. I could write his name here, but I'm not going to do that right now. But I was going to grab, I don't know where that is, a brush tip. The brush pen so with your ink when you're finished with all of your inking and your words um you know just finding something here's one i like here's a quote some of us think holding on makes us strong but sometimes it is letting go um so just think of a, a word or a thought or a quote or something from your heart that kind of works with that uh with your drawing and then then that's that that's the inking portion of our adventure here you can then set aside your ink or, you know, get, you put it somewhere so it's not in the way. Like, I need to move it far away from my colors. I'm just going to, uh, let's see, put that somewhere. All right. So the next step now is the coloring part. So I'm going to get my watercolors, any color you've got. And I don't need my subject anymore because, well, of course, I could use look at the subject. And I'm going to switch out. I didn't really use that, but I'm going to still switch out my water. And now I'm going to do the color. So the same thing, you do need something to put underneath it. And I'll just put this paper towel. If it's rice paper, if it's watercolor paper, no, you don't need to, but something. Um, now you'll need your coloring brush. Now a coloring brush could be just basically a brush that doesn't, it wasn't previously used for, for ink. Or if you, you did use it for ink, make sure you wash out, wash it out very well. Um, you also need a dish for uh, diluting your colors. These are very concentrated, these Gonzai watercolors. If you happen to have any, they're pretty pigmented. Um, but your traditional, regular watercolors will, will work as well. So whatever you've got. So let's see, I'm going to pick, I, I think I wanna do this in a nice green because this is supposed to be a plant. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of green here in, in my dish. And I think you wanna keep your palette really simple. Like you, you want the, so I've got this green here, but it's a little bit too, it needs a little yellow. It needs something to kind of make it a little more of a yellow green. So I'm just going to kind of mix that up a little bit like that. And you can do that with your watercolors. I also like this color. It's like an ochre. That's a beautiful color. It gives a really muted um, green. So I'm going to use those three colors for the, for the succulent. Now it's different than when, when we paint with watercolor on our, our sized, watercolor paper. This is going to be different. Um, instead of brushing, um, we're still going to drop color onto the, um, to the, to the surface, but it's going to be a little different. We want it to be loose and rough. I mean, loose and um, modeled, you know, and I'll show you what I mean. Because the paper, the paint is not going to float and move around. It's going to soak in and kind of spread. So I'm going to start from the center and I'm just going to make kind of little blots and it's a pretty dark color. So I'm going to lighten it up a little. Um, and I'm just kind of going to keep 
I'm just sort of dotting it in, if that makes sense. I'm not really trying to um, just kind of dotting it. And with the bigger brush, I would have a different look. I've got a small brush right now. Um, I'm going to just kind of wipe, like do a large area here, maybe a large there. But I want to keep some of the lights that I have, the whites. I'm going to go like that. Um, let's see, I'm going to just kind of get it more, even more diluted, a little bit lighter colors maybe. Just kind of play with the, here we go, like this. And so now I've got some dimension here. So see how the with the uh, paint, it just kind of goes in, like, and it soaks in, but you can layer with it, which is really nice. You can layer. So I'm leaving some of the whites. And um, you can also shadow, and I'll show you that in a minute. But see, the paints do blend together on the paper, but just differently than you would on your other paper. So I'm going to put a little more yellow here and just this spot here, keeping my color choices pretty, pretty, um, keeping them simple. So there's my succulent. That's it. And I'm leaving some whites for the highlight to keep the light. Now this little jar, this little thing, that was actually a kind of a bluish green. And I'm going to go ahead and try to keep it similar to the color that I already had. So I'm going to just do like a blue green color. And I'm going to just add, I'm leaving the, thinking about the white areas. So I'm just going to put some color down. And the looser, the better. You don't have to think about, um, you know, like, oh, this has to be a perfect, uh, perfect thing. It just does its own thing. And when it dries, it dries a lot lighter than what you start with. So um, you'll know that, always know that. And with the ink, it stays, the dark ink stays dark, but the these colors will, uh, dark will lighten quite a bit. They soak right in. So I'm going to leave that like that. And I think I'll add just a touch of this pink color. It's, a, it's kind of a nice pinky carmine. I'm going to just bring it maybe here and there. Just let that kind of look kind of fun. And now I'm going to shadow. I could add shadow. So I've got a little kind of a blue gray color and I'm just going to shadow some things to give it dimension. So here, shadow there, shadow there. And this is just a very light gray, kind of a Payne's gray, if you have Payne's gray. Here we go, like that. I'm just shadowing, creating a shadow. And I think I'll create a shadow right here, even though I haven't done the actual base yet. And the base I'm gonna make, keeping this palette very, very simple. The base is a yellow, it's a ochre color. So you can see, I love the softness of this paper and how it, um, how it accepts color. And I think I'll add that little bit of yolk, that little ochre right at some in some of these parts here, because I love that ochre color. Just a little here and there, not all, just spot it in there in a few places. Yeah, like that. So that is that one. Now the last part, this is the part that makes it all come together, I think. When I see it, um, you need that red seal, however you do it. So I'm gonna let that sit, I'm not going to let it sit. I'm just going to move it here for a second. And I want to show you what I did to make my seals. If you have uh, eraser material, you know, this kind of stuff, carving block, whatever, you know, just a little cheap eraser. I mean, it's amazing um, what you can, what you can, you know, just with a little eraser, what you can do. So I'm going to show you real quick how I did this. And it doesn't take long. So I have, I, I wrote my initials in, with a pencil. And now I'm going to turn it over. And this is some tracing paper. I'm going to turn it over. This is Carved December, the beginning of Carved December. So I thought, you know, it was only appropriate to have a little carving. So you just want to make sure your, your, your uh, drawing is right sized right for your little block. So just always, you know, make it a little smaller than your block. And then once you've got it uh, positioned, then you just take your fingers or a fingernail and rub it, that pencil side is going to transfer onto that eraser. So if you have a little piece of eraser or even like the end of a pencil, that eraser there works also great for a little chop seal kind of thing. And it's, there we are. So I've got that, so it's on there. You see that, right? And what I did was I have these, but I also made, this is a little uh, speedball carving 
thing, which is awesome if you're going to be do, doing eraser carving. We've had eraser carving classes in our club, I think, last year, and I think we'll be doing some more. So, um, but you can also, if you need to, only if you only have a craft knife, you can use that too. But the th limits with the craft knife, you have to do straight, straight lines. It's harder to do curved, but you can still do your initials um, with your with an exacto. But I like these little this little tiny V groove. You want to make sure they're sharp. And what you want to do is carve. Now I shouldn't. I don't want to carve toward me, but I always do. <laughs> I try. Here I'm going to try not to carve towards my hand. I'm going to push it into the eraser material, and I'm just going to move it along. And I've got a nice big deep line there. I didn't think I'd go that deep. Um, it's all right. So I'm going to. You know, I'll just carve it up there. We got a big K there, and then I'm going to carve this here. And each letter that you carve out is really going to look different, or each signature. So you can make several signatures and just see which one you like the most. Okay, so I've got, I'm just going to move my, now when you're carving, you see what I'm doing is I'm moving my stamp rather than my, I'm keeping my, and that's what I should have showed you, I'm going to keep my tool stationary, but I'm going to move my hand because it's safer that way and it's much you get a much more clean cut so i'm not moving my i'm actually just moving my eraser and i'm kind of loosely you know, going around there we go like that now there's my initial i could decide to make um, this a little bit i'm going to move that eraser make this a little thicker and see how quickly that came out and i'm going to just do a little test print and that's what I love about these, because you can just do a little test print and you can decide how you want, if it looks the way you want it or not. And you can always, I'll just do a quick, quick print on this. And I think it came out pretty cool, just simple like that. And so now um, if you don't have a stamp, it's okay, use a pen. But here's what I'm talking about when I say it finishes, <laughs> the whole thing gets totally, it's finished when you put the seal on. Now, when you're putting a, your, your signature, you have to decide, you know, you, you don't want to put it right here necessarily, but it's part of the composition because the color is very um, unique. There's no, that red is not in there in the painting, but it's really, it's in the thing. So I have to decide where I want this. So I think I'm going to put it down here, but it's part of the design, which is really, you know, part, it's just essential when you're making these, um, it becomes part of the design. So now it totally finishes it. Um, I think it's changes everything when you put that seal on. And now I have a really nice little finished thing once, of course, once it's dry. Um, and then I can mount it on something. Now you could put it in a five by seven frame and give it as a gift. Um, you could also put it in five by seven and hang it up somewhere to inspire you if you put something that means something to you. So this one, I want to make this kind of a blue tea, blue teapot. So I'm just gonna use some, here we go, just some pretty blue. It's just a straight, just some, I don't know, ultramarine blue. And I'm just gonna go kind of light. And I'm going to make, I've got to think about my lights and darks too. So I'm gonna look at my my little teapot and I'm gonna see where it's darker. And I see that it's darker there and under here. Just kind of loose, be loose and expressive. And if it goes outside the line, no big deal. It soaks outside the line it's supposed to. And that's okay. It makes it more interesting, I think. Here's another place that it needs. And then here. And maybe this little line needs a little shadow right there. So I, I'm loving just the spontaneity of this. I just love this. I'm going to add a little bit of that green that I had mixed in the other over here and just see what I can maybe just put some dots some color in if you want to make it look real painterly just make dots kind of like this and that makes gives it a more um, kind of like a painterly finish I'll just do the same thing here some dots and then those will sort of spread and they'll blend outward of course and they'll look it'll look more painterly you can see like the little dots will show there's, they don't go away. So like if you were to do this with watercolors, regular um, sized paper, your dots will probably spread. But um, these, 
will actually uh, stay. So I'm just doing there. I'm going to keep it like that. I think that's fun. I could keep going and going, of course, you know. Um, I'm just going to know, keep, stay where my light's coming from. And another place I need to make a shadow is right there. So I'm going to go ahead, put a little bit on that. And that's that. Just the more spontaneous, the better. This one's a plain one. So I'm going to do um, kind of, I think I need some yellow to uh, counteract the blue a little bit. So I'm going to add some of my uh, beautiful um, ochre color. And I'm going to just put it on straight on kind of like lay it on really quickly and spontaneously spont spontane spontaneously that's the word now if i want to create a shadow something for some little bit of dimension um, i'm going to grab a little bit of that same blue this blue that i had used and i'm going to put a little bit right there so that muted out that yellow just a little bit see how it just kind of did and i can make, put some dots also to give to give some um, texture kind of texture and it will show up even more so after the painting is dry like that that one i like just by itself i'm gonna leave it very simple just two colors only did not do anything else that red my red little seal when i finish it will finish it so that one i'm gonna let sit and i won't be writing anything yet because I have to think about that. I think about, I'll think about what I want to say. But here's the other teapot that I did. Um, this was the last one. This has the cookies. <laughs> so this time I'm going to paint the cookies first. I'm going to paint them in a brown color just because they're cookies. So I'm just going to do cookies. And then I think this teapot's going to be a reddish color, but not more of a pink red than a, a red red so i'm just going to pull some of this color and i'm just going to do very light and see i went off and that's fine i'm going to go very light and very expressive and i got this thing here and Karen, you know what i'm finding the uh, yasutomo brushes brand worked the best out of all the bamboo brushes i have just oh so well you know. oh good <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. Well. <laughs> glad to hear that, Melissa, because um, the thing that, you know, having worked with Yasutomo for close to 30 years, yeah. um, one thing the Yasutomo has always done, and I've been a good, a good part of it for many years, is uh, they really take care. There's really great care and quality, not, you know, not just, pri uh, you know, they try, they try to keep things affordable, but to have quality um, for the experience for the person to have the experience that you know the good creative experience rather than just having something that looks like <laughs> like the right yeah yeah so, it's good stuff so thanks I'm for thank you i'm sure they'll love to hear that yes um, okay so i'm just going to do a little instead of this time i had my pink or purple teapot or whatever it is i'm going to neutralize it a little bit i'm going to put a little uh of a gray color in there like a just a shadow gray it's like a Payne's gray so if you have Payne's gray you can use the same I'm just shadowing it and you can see how wet it's like coming right through going right through the rice paper but that's okay Ooh, that one I accidentally that was a total total boo-boo but hey what do they say Bob Ross said what did Bob Ross say uh, in fact I wrote it here <laughs> we don't make mistakes just happy little accidents <laughs> that was not gonna, supposed to happen. So now I have to pretend like it, I made, I meant it to be, happen. So what I need to do, that strong blue is going to have to continue throughout the whole thing. Otherwise, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. So um, that's okay. This, this is my happy accident. I'm just going to put it, you know, in a very painterly way throughout the whole piece. And I'm going to let that sit. I think that's enough. I think I've that is so strong. So I'm going to try it another. I'm going to do another strong one down here, and another strong stroke up here, so that it looks like I meant it. <laughs> there it goes. So there. I think I kind of fixed it. I hope. I mean, really, you can't overbrush it because it's just you know, and you really can't brush into it because the paper is delicate when it's wet. It's pretty strong when it dries, but it's pretty delicate while wet. So my intention was to make that blue on this. Instead, I put it on the teapot. So now I'm going to have to redirect my thinking, and I'll probably use the a bright yellow. 
I'm trying to keep the palette simple. So I'm going to use a bright yellow and I'm just going to put it in like over here and leaving some of the white like that. And then to shadow it, just like, you know, with our other watercolors, I'm going to take some of that blue that I had and I put it right here to make cookies have shadows <laughs> and maybe a little bit under there. And I'm going to let that sit. Now I'll think about that once it's completely dry, I'll think of a quote that kind of inspiring quote for this particular piece. And what I could try, something I haven't done yet, um, I think it'd be fun, is to take some white. I'm just curious because I haven't, since I did mess it up already. You know that white that we never use? <laughs> Let's see what happens. I think I want to see if I can do some highlights on this, I'll be really happy. So we'll see. I'm going to look for that light. I'm going to load my brush up with a lot of white and just see what happens. I'm going to see if I, oh yeah, kind of a fun. It brings some light back. Ooh, okay. Yep. So if you get some too much, so you can put the light back in with the white, which I think is kind of fun. So yeah, you can do it. Here's another place and here's another spot there. So the white is going to look great. Um, it, unlike, we don't use white in our normal watercolor, but we can put the white, the light back in, which I think is pretty amazing. So this is just another way of expressing a very spontaneous and fun. I'm just going to make the wings on that, and that's good. Leave it that way. I'm going to add a couple of little light little things to my, to my cookies, make some texture there. So there it is. And then oh, maybe I could add a little, uh, this would be fun, is adding a little color, not much. I'm putting some white with some, a little bit of blue. I'm going to just do a little steam coming out of my teapot. Maybe just some steam going across like that. I'm just going to leave that. And then I have room. You always want to leave room for your quote or your word or your sentiment that you're going to add. You always want to leave that room. So, and then you can leave room for your little seal. So there it is. Um,